actually found from Cambridge University a definition of grow up. And so, here it is. If someone tells you, grow up, you are telling the person to stop behaving like a child. Now, I personally have never had anyone say this to me. <laughs> uh, some of you have said it, and some of you have had it said, and some of you both ways. It, grow up. In Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14, we run into one of what are known as the warning passages, and there are several of them in the book of Hebrews. And this particular warning passage is warning us that we need to grow up in our Christian faith. And so if you turn to Hebrews chapter 5, starting in verse 11. The Bible says, About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Now, if we're going to grow up spiritually, we need to, need to stay sharp. In fact, what he says here, he says, you've, you've become dull of hearing. Now, we don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews. Um, I always kind of lean towards the Apostle Paul, but there's no stated author, so we're not sure. But anyway, the Alice says, man, I, there's some stuff I wanted to, to talk about that's difficult. Hard to explain. It's challenging. Now, let, let's be honest. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that's not difficult. You can read it, and you know what's going on. For example, we have a little guy named David. There's a really big guy named Goliath. They go to battle each other. But God is bigger than both of them. And so David takes a stone in a sling and throws it at Goliath. God guides the stone, hits him between the eyes, and kills him, and David wins. Is everybody with me? See, I told you. There's some of the Bible. You just read it. You go, yep, I, I know what happened. Let's take the three asbestos Jews. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're throwing the fiery furnace. God preserves their life while they're, they're just walking around the fire. Remember, they come out and smell like smoke. That's it. We understand what happened. King gets angry, throws them in the fire. God preserves them. They come out. They don't smell like smoke. Uh, there's lots of the Bible. You just read it. Oh, it's that, I, 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 I get it. I, I understand it. It's just kind of just right there. And, and uh, so you can. And, and, and matter of fact, the basic storyline of the Bible is really not that difficult. God made everything, including human beings. They broke God's rules. Got kicked out of the garden. It's been a mess ever since. It's called sin. So God sent His Son Jesus to pay the penalty for sin when He died on the cross, to rise again on the third day to go to heaven. Someday He's coming to take all who belong to Him to be with Him forevermore. And we belong to Him when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what He's done. That's not complicated. It's pretty straightforward. And that's how it is. Now, while that's true, there are parts of the Bible that do seem more challenging, more difficult. Now, some of that's just due to a lack of information. Uh, especially the Old Testament. Unless you know who the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Moabites are, and the Philistines, and people from Tyre and Sidon, known as Phoenicians, and then we get, you know, the Perizzites and the... I always like the word Gergeshite. Sounds like they're gurgling. You have the Gergeshites and the Canaanites, and we have Hittites, and we have Hivites and Gibeonites, and all kinds of ites all over the place. And, and you're like, I don't know who these people are. It's called Google. You just look it up and find them. I mean, so it's not that it's difficult to understand. It's just there's a lot of places and people that we, we, we don't know who they are. And so, when you, you know, and so you, you know, then there's some parts of the Bible that are just, you read and go, oh, what exactly is it talking about? So I've always found it fascinating when I hear people make this statement. You know what? When people want to start reading the Bible, I'll tell them, you should read the Gospel of John first. Because you know what I do? I never start at the beginning of a book. I always start somewhere in the middle or the end. When I buy a new book, I think, I think with this book, chapter 6. I'll start with chapter 6. You know why I usually start a book? Okay, eight of you read. Where do you start a book? The beginning. So if you want to read the Bible, where's a good place to start? As a matter of fact, you know what the three, first three words of the Bible are? In the beginning. That sounds like a really good place to start, doesn't it? But no, no, go read the Gospel of John. So if somebody's never really read the Bible, and you tell them, go read the Gospel of John, they're thinking, well, this must be the easiest part of the Bible to understand. 
That's what John starts off with. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. I think I like in the beginning better. Like what he started again. But when you read through while they're seven you go, what in the whole in the world is all this this word stuff and, and, and in the beginning and, and, and is with God and, with, and all that kind of thing. And so you get some things that they're, they're, are more challenging, they're more difficult. And then you get really big words like propitiation. Because we use that all the time in our normal talk. So you get all these big words you go, I have no idea what this is. And then there are these these very complicated, difficult theological concepts that we find in the Bible. Like, there's one and only one God. And He exists in three persons, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, forever. You're thinking, man, I really struggle with that whole three people, one God thing. But yeah, but I struggle with the eternity thing, too. I don't understand eternity. I don't have any kind of reference point to eternity. Actually, it's not true. I do. I've been in the waiting room. <laughs> So you have this, this whole, like, it just, it gets very difficult and, and complex. So what he's saying here is, I wanted to talk to you about some of these big terms, some of these very complicated issues, but I'm able to because you've become dull of hearing, doesn't communicate. And so he said, I wanted to, but, it, but I couldn't. So let me see if I can show you the way that this works. <clears throat> about being able to explain something that's... And then something else is like, man, so much beyond. What is the most famous formula in all of history? Formula One. <laughs> if you like watching cars go on ovals, that makes sense. Otherwise, you're probably lost. What's the most famous formula? Relativity. Einstein. We've seen it all over the place. E equals MC squared. It's really not difficult. Really, the, the basic idea is pretty simple. E equals energy. Mass, or M, stands for mass. Most people say that C stands for constant. Technically, uh, it's from a, uh, a Latin word that means ceiling, because it's a fast you go, because anything beyond the speed of light, uh, mass becomes infinite, not able to move. And so, but it's, the, the, the idea behind it is really quite simple, that energy is the result of speed. Because C is the speed of light. 186,282 miles per second. But that's not what this says. This is the speed of light times the speed of light. 186,282 times 186,282. That's a really big number. It won't even fit on the screen on your phone, which for some of you means it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's a, it's a mad, so here's that. You understand how this works. The energy is the result of speed. If I take a bat and I'm going to real slowly and tap you, all right. I take the same bat and swing it really fast. What happens? It's going. To, you're going to feel it. The bat has the same mass, but the speed increases the energy. Okay. So this is where we get nuclear power. You remember back in your basic science class, way back there in third, fourth, fifth grade, wherever it is you learned it, and we have like atoms they have the nucleus protons and neutrons, and there's all, I know there's about two dozen parts in there, but anyway, those are the main ones. And uh, then it, it's, we have these electrons flying all around. And you remember the shells and the subshells and noble gases that are on the right column of the periodic chart of the elements, which is a great wall decoration. And so you have, and so you remember all that. Now, electrons are actually moving at the speed of light. That's really fast. Now, if you're having trouble, you're like, man, I just don't quite understand the speed of light. Yeah, you do. You've been on the interstate. There are people trying to get there. And so that's what's moving. Just that there's a very minuscule amount of mass in electron, but it's moving at the speed of light. So you take that and multiply it by itself. So what happens in, is that if you can separate that electron from the nucleus and it shoots off on its own, so to speak, the speed of that electron is where all that energy comes from. That's where nuclear energy comes from. That's why they call it splitting the atom. You split that up. So it's not the mass of the electron. It's the speed that creates that energy. So speed equals energy. And I know there's a lot more to it, but that's kind of it. Now that's actually Einstein's specific theory of relativity. But Einstein's goal in life was to develop a unifying theory, which would explain how everything works. And specific relativity actually does not explain because of the effects of gravity, what's known as Einsteinian principles, and some other things. So he developed what's known as the general theory of relativity, and here it is. Now, this one, 
will take a whole lot longer to explain. And just so you know, this is actually a simplified version. Here's a fuller version of Einstein's general theory of relativity. So here's what the Bible's saying. I wanted just to explain equals them. I want to explain all the complications of the general theory of relativity and how gravity and time and space and time, how all works together, and there are actually four dimensions, depth, width, height, and time, and how that affects the speed of light and how gravity is and all that kind of stuff. I want to do all that, but I couldn't do all of that because we're still back at three times three. Which says that you become, you become dull of hearing. And so he says, I really wanted to, to move I want you to grow up and to be able to do this. And so, notice what he says in, in verse 12. He says, man, I mean, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you. Again, the basic principles, the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. Now, when he says, by this time, what he means is it takes work. It takes time. To move in the Christian life from here to here does not happen instantaneously. You can't do it at light speed. If you want to do it that fast, you have to go ludicrous speed. All right, y'all need to go watch baseballs. Uh, and so, uh, so it, 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 it takes time to grow and develop and mature in the Christian life. So by this time, notice, there's been enough time passed that not only should you know it, but you should have the ability and the skill to be able to be teachers. But instead... We're still back at the basics, just the, the, the simple stuff. And then he makes this kind of analogy. You need milk, not solid food. I've given a lot of thought to this idea of milk versus solid food. Obviously, we're talking like baby food versus adult food. So I, 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 just, I really got to thinking about how this works. I was like, okay, so this is... Baby food. Okay, I guess all right, some, so this, that's baby food. That is the same thing as this. This has just been liquefied, more or less. And now, let me, you know, this is the same thing as this. It's just in a squeezy pouch. Because you kind of move beyond that to where you take the lid off and you, you just suck all the applesauce out. Yes. And so this is for... And so I've, I've, I've thought... I really have. I've thought a great deal about this. And it occurred to me, especially what we see next to it occurred to me the point may not be the content, but the method of delivery. That, that the focus here is not on... The, the, the milk versus the, the solid food. But instead, is on delivery. So let me see if I can illustrate this. What do I mean by that? Now, I, we raised four kids. We have nine grandkids. So I've been down this road more than once. And here's the way it goes. When you're opa and you ask, have they started on solid foods? And the answer is that we're just beginning. The next question is, then they can have ice cream. <laughs> Come on now. Everybody ought to be ready for ice cream. I mean, it's a milk product. How about chocolate? How about chocolate ice cream? I'm like, yeah! It's like, and so the idea is, like, so it's like they're eating solid. But here's the thing. When they start eating solid foods, we don't really mean solid foods. You don't go from the bottle to a T-bone. And what we mean is, is, is like this. But then I started really thinking. I got started thinking. But when you feed a baby, you don't just feed them. You have to try to make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, feed them like that, man. <laughs> I guess you had, it, 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 there's almost like an entertainment level element to get them to eat. And so what I think that the Bible's telling us here, by the way, you know that's pretty good. Here's what the Bible's saying. It's not that it's milk versus solid food. It is 
you have to be fed versus you can feed yourself. So the, the, the milk indicates that, that and, and, and the great danger is there are a lot of Christians who what they're looking for is entertainment value. Now, I'm all, look, I love it. I think we ought always have a good time at church because we're celebrating Jesus. And so I, I'm not one of these, you know, that doesn't think that, that God has a sense of humor and we should be serious all the time. I know some of you have no sense of humor, but I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, it's a so I mean, but, but the idea that, you know, well, just entertain me, entertain me, entertain me, you're never going to grow. You're just constantly being fed. You need to be able to feed. Now, think about it. Now, like I said, I've thought a lot about this. I've, I've thought further. I thought, man, <laughs> do you know how weird it would be if we went to lunch after church today and you're sitting at the table with me, an adult, and I was to say, you think he is a nut job. I, I can handle that myself. Like they, like I should be able to look at you and go, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a while. Guess you can feed yourself. So what I, I think he's saying is that, that that you need to move beyond being fed to feeding yourself. That's why he says you should have been teachers. You should get in the Bible yourself. You should read the Bible for yourself. You should spend time with God in prayer yourself. You should be feeding yourself spiritually yourself. You, that, that's the idea of Christian maturity, is that I don't have to have somebody else do it for me all the time by waving a spoon in front of my face. And so I think that the, the distinction here is more about the, the delivery versus, I mean, some of it's content, but it, it's more about there are those who just want to be, I don't want to do anything, I just want to be fed and have it easy. Instead of doing the effort to feed myself and, and to grow on God's Word. So it says, you're still in need of milk, not solid food. And then he's going to push that point even further now in verse 13. talks about the skills we should have. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. They can't read the Bible for themselves. They want somebody else to spoon feed it to them. So they, they're unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, those that can feed themselves. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Now this word um, <clears throat> discernment used a lot in the book of Proverbs to talk about life skills. So that, 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 that we have life skills. And the reason this is so important is because if not, you're going to get destroyed by our enemy. That, that you can, you know, the idea is that you have developed the skills of the Christian life in your own life. And you don't have to be spoon-fed anymore. So, we pull up to a store. And here's how it goes. When you get out of the van, I want you to put your hand on the van. And I want you to keep touching the van because I have to get your sister out. Keep your hand on the van. You don't say, look, you're three, you can walk, just head on in the store, I'll catch up. Keep your hand on the van. Because they don't have the skill level yet to look for traffic and understand how all that works. Keep your hand on the van till we get everybody out, and I can come around, and I'll take you by the hand, and I'll walk you in. Now, if you and I, after we go to lunch and I feed you today, were to go to the store, and I was to say to you, I drive a truck, I would say, now, when you get out of the truck, put your hand on the truck until I can come around and hold your hand across the parking lot. You would think, we're going to find another church. <laughs> This pastor's a whack job. Like, you don't, you, if you're with, I assume you're old enough to get out of the car. And now I realize that no matter how mature you might be, sometimes you don't see the car coming. And sometimes somebody yells, watch out. And so I realize that no matter how, well, you know, the Bible, how much you study, how much you pray, memorize, and all that, there's still times when you still need help with things. All the, I understand that. But the reality is, you know, you, you ought to be mature enough in the Christian life, if you've been walking with Jesus for several years, that you don't need to put your hand on the van and wait to be handheld across the parking lot, into the store, and then spoon-fed. He's saying that, that enough time has passed that you should be the one who is, who is doing it. Now, here's why it's not just we should be at that point. We have to stay on top of it. We continue to eat. We continue to feed ourselves on the truth of God's Word. 
Why? Because verse 14, with these powers of discernment were trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. If you don't stay in the Word of God and in fellowship with God and in prayer to God, your Christian skills will erode. And it's amazing how quickly they can. So when our youngest child moved out of the home, we realized that other than Jesus, we don't have a lot in common. So we decided, let's find something to do together. Well, my first thing was, let's take up mountain biking. You come join me. Hiking, martial arts, I mean, she's a little more again. I was like, no, no, we just didn't. So like, let's find. So we decided, we'll do puzzles. That'd be, we can do that together. We'll do puzzles. But unfortunately, my wife does not have the patience that I do. We got halfway through the first puzzle. I said, I can't do this. I can't do, I, I, I can't do this. I just wanted to burn them. Um, it, it, it's, I, just, it's so frustrating. I, I, I just like, no, it's like, this ain't going to work. So I go, well, let's, so we start thinking, let's, we'll take up scuba diving. We're only a few hours from the ocean. We can get trained. We can get certified. And we can go spend hours under the water not talking to each other. That makes a marriage strong. So we'll take up scuba diving. This would be great. We'll scuba dive together. So we started looking around for scuba dive lessons and uh, found a couple places, called, started finding about, you know, what cost was all involved in it. And then two of our kids got engaged and were going to be married three months apart. And realized, you know, we don't want to look like fools at the reception. Let's take a couple of dance lessons. At least get a few basic moves down. And so we got one of those, you know, your first five lessons are free and then we'll into your bank account after that sort of thing. And so uh, we, uh, we signed up, took a few free lessons, and four years later, my wife and I are ballroom dancers. So we found the thing that we do together and it's, it's been a lot of fun and still is. However, uh, over the last year to year and a half, as many of you are aware, my mother-in-law had a terminal illness, so Jerry was out of state quite a bit helping to take care of her mom and sometimes gone for two months at a pop. So we were just kind of sticking a lesson here or there whenever she was here, and I was going to try to help some, and it just really sporadic, and we didn't get to practice much. And um, it just, you know, and it, it was shocking how quickly the skills eroded. I no longer dip her, I just drop her. <laughs> like you, you have to stay on top of it to keep your skills up. And this is true in so much of life. I must be honest, do you really want the doctor to look at you and say, hey, you know, I haven't actually done a surgery in a couple of decades. But trust me, I, you want a doctor that has maintained their skills. If you have a, a, an accountant or someone do your taxes, you'd like for them to have at least sort of stayed up on tax law. Oh, it's fine. I, I, I graduated in 73. I've got it. Like, no, you want them to stay up. Like that, 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 and so what he's saying is you don't like just kind of do the Christian thing somewhere in life and that will get you through to the end of life. You've got to stay with it. You have to stay consistent. You have to continue to feed yourself. You say, well, how do I feed myself? How do I grow in the Christian life? How do I do this? How do I move from being spoon-fed milk to being able to feed myself solid food. Well, I'm glad you asked. Because I have a 26-step process that I have discovered. Unfortunately, many people think that's the way that it is. But the Christian life is complicated and difficult, and it's only for a handful of people who discovered some kind of secret, but it's really it's not as difficult as you would think it is. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Get in the morning. Read the Bible. If you're not a morning person, read in the afternoon, or lunch break, or at night. So I'm not a very good reader. All right? You can get it on Audible books. I always find it funny when somebody says, does that count? No. God gives no points for Audible books. Yes, it counts. It's the Bible. Whether you're reading with your eyes or reading with your ears, it, it, it's still God's Word. So just read it. And then memorize some verses. So I can't memorize all. You know what? I've discovered everybody can memorize. Everybody can. And you say, well, how do you know that? Because I'm a professor. And in my Old Testament introduction class, semester one, you must give the Ten Commandments in order on the final or you will fail the entire semester. You will not be a seminary graduate and not know God's Ten Commandments. 
I've been teaching for over two decades. I've taught thousands of students. I've never had a single student miss that question. They know it's coming. I warn them ahead. Two months ahead, it's coming. This is the first question. You'll get it. Every single student has gotten it right every single time. You can memorize. Maybe not as well as others, but you can do it. Memorize God's Word. Read it, memorize it, and pray. Now I'm going to just take the, the burden off of you on prayer. Prayer does not require you on your knees, your eyes closed, and big words. Even though God does understand big words. Just talk to God. It's okay to pray with your eyes open. Matter of fact, if you're driving down the road, we prefer that. You don't got to pull over the side of the road, get out, get on your knees, pray. Just pray. Some of you do that already. I'll guarantee many of you on the roads around here at some point said, oh, God, help me. Like, you pray. It's okay. It just, just talk to God. It's all right. Just spend time talking to God. You go, okay, what are the other 24 things? No, just get in the Bible, read it, memorize it, spend time with God in prayer, and then be amazed how much you'll grow in your spiritual life. And here's what starts to happen. As you've read God's Word and you've prayed, you encounter a situation at work, and you just instinctively think, God, help me make you look good in this situation. When you come to a decision in life, you're thinking, what does the Bible say about this? You find Bible verses coming to mind that you put in there. The Holy Spirit pulls them out. This is what it means to mature and grow in the Christian life. Now, some of you are still stuck back on the read the Bible part because you tried. So I'm going to help you a little bit here. You can't pronounce half the names in the Bible. How do you know? Because I can read them all in the original Hebrew language, and I still can't pronounce half of them. So just say buttermilk and keep going. It's all right. God doesn't grade you on your pronunciation. Aren't you glad? You don't have to get Mary's Tower hash baths right. Just buttermilk. This will get you to the first nine chapters of First Chronicles. Buttermilk begat buttermilk begat buttermilk begat buttermilk. See, it's all right. It's okay. If there's some part you go, man, I don't understand that. Just make a note and just keep reading past it. Now, be careful looking on Google. There's some real weirdos out there with all kinds of strange, bizarre stuff. That, it's okay. Ask somebody. Say, man, I was reading the Bible today. I'm not sure what this is. Could you help me? And they may or not be able to help you. So find that you, it's okay to get some help. It's all right. Sometimes I need help when I'm cooking. If it didn't microwave or grilled. It's all right. It's okay. So relax. Some is better than none. And just let God start working on you in your life. Now, here's the way it goes. Some of you may not, look, you're not even at milk stage. You haven't even gotten to the starting line yet. Look, what does it mean to be a Christian? Now, this is where people really get thrown because they're looking for something difficult and challenging. Because, I mean, to go to heaven ought to be difficult and challenging and require a tremendous amount of effort and accuracy. So I'm going to help you with how difficult it is and how accurate you have to be. You have broken God's law that makes you guilty. God sent His Son, Jesus, to pay the penalty for that guilt on the cross to rise again the third day. And if you put all of your hope and confidence in Him, you go to heaven. Wait, isn't there more? Well, there's a whole lot more to the Christian life, but that's all there is to become a Christian. You're in trouble, and only Jesus can save you. You rebelled against God, and only Jesus can make you right with Him. I word a lot of different ways, but the bottom line is, you broke God's law, and you are guilty. And only Jesus can remove that guilt. And your only hope is to put your hope in Him and Him alone. Once we're there, then we start on the milk. But don't stay in the nursery. Keep feasting on God's Word. Keep spending time with Him in prayer, and you will grow. You will grow up. You'll be able to feed yourself from God's Word in the fellowship with Him. Our Heavenly Father, this is, in some ways, kind of an embarrassing warning. There were some who, after a long time, still just wanted to be entertained and food fed. No effort on their own. No commitment on their own. Not, not feeding themselves. So God, I pray that you would help us. Wherever we are in the Christian life, whether it's early or we've been at it a long time, God, you would always help us to be progressing. Help us to acquire the skills for the Christian life from your word. Help us maintain them to discern good and evil. God, I pray that you would help us to continue to grow for the honor and the glory of the name of Jesus Christ.
For it is in his name that we pray.